Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Phyllis. Well, I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. I'm all tied up. But that's only temporary. Uh, some efficiency expert is dropping around to demonstrate that if I plan my work properly, I'll have time to kill. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Puzzling Pinup. Miracle Whip has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip only one of its kind. Miracle Whip best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise, so it's truly distinctive and delicious, with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. The case of the puzzling pinup. It's Sunday afternoon in New York, and a young man named Charles Sylvester Braden II breaks all records dashing up the steps of a small rooming house in New York's west side. And when he gets to the top floor, he begins hammering on the door of room 413. Come on, Pat. Open up. Who is it? You know who it is. Now open up. Go away, Charles. No, no, you, you, you can't send me away like this. I've got to talk to you. All right, just a second. Lock it. No, it's all right. Nobody will disturb us. I said lock it. Look, Charles, you, you're not well. Don't you believe it for a second. Don't you see, Pat? It, it was just a scheme to keep us apart. But I fooled them. Charles, please don't lock that door. What's the matter, Pat? Don't you trust me either? Of course I do. It, it's just that I, I, I don't like to see you so upset. Look, I, I've got an idea. What are you doing with that phone? I was just going to call your father. Put it down. But, Charles... Put it down. No, so, so you're working with them, too. No, I'm not. Then prove it. Marry me. You're insane. What did you say? N nothing, Charles. You're lying. I... I... Y you were going to say I was insane. I, I wasn't, I swear. I'll give you one last chance. I've got a car downstairs. Will you come with me? Look, Charles. Answer me. But, darling... All right, Pat. You had your opportunity. What are you doing with that gun? I gave you your chance, Pat. You'll have to admit that. Darling, now, listen to me. I I've... I've changed my mind. How do I, I know that you won't change it again? Charles, you can't do this. They'll, they'll hang you. No. No, they won't. You see, I'll be dead. No. Yes, you don't think I'd let you go without me. Charles, please. Don't be afraid, Pat. I'll be right by your side. Goodbye, darling. No. I 
was down in the basement fixing the border when I heard the shots, Mr. Shelley. So right away, I got on the phone and called your newspaper. Mm -hmm. Anybody else here in Driscoll? Oh, no, it wasn't nobody else home. What about the cops? Well, I ain't notified them yet, you know. Uh, that was smart, Driscoll. I'll take care of you. Uh -huh. All right, where do we go now? Uh, it's this room here. Okay, open the door. Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, your editor, Mr. Wingate, said you'd have a little present for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'll give you 50 when we get inside. But uh, Mr. Wingate promised me 100. Okay, here it is. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now, where's your passkey? Hey, shut that door. Hmm. What's the girl's name? Patricia Brooks. You know the guy? No. Mm -hmm. uh, pull up the shade. I want to get a good look at his right. puss. Holy smoke. What's the matter, Mr. Shelley? Well, you know who this is? Charles Sylvester Braden II. Who? Well, skip it. Hand me some flash bulbs. Huh? Uh, they're in that case by your feet. Oh, okay. You know, something tells me these shots are going to be every bit as sensational as Mr. Braden's. Mr. Wingate. Oh, hello, Shelley. I'm sorry that tip didn't pay off. The way the janitor spoke on the phone, I thought we had something. Huh? What are you talking about, boss? The yarn I sent you out on. Whole story just came over the ticker. Cops were just there. Too bad there was nothing to it. Nothing to it? Do you realize... Oh, look, Shelley. Maybe in the hick town you come from, a pretty girl committing suicide is big news. But in New York, it happens every day in a week. Yeah, but what about... Well, what about what? Well, what did the cops find? The same thing you did. Dead girl named Pat Brooks holding a gun in her hand. Nothing else? What are you getting at? Should there have been anything else? Uh, no, no, of course not. Where are your pictures? Uh, pictures? That's what I sent you there for, remember? Where are they? Uh, they, uh, they ain't. Y you see, I forgot to take a long film. You what? I'm sorry, boss. I feel like an awful jerk. Okay, forget it. At least there was no harm done. But it'll teach you to be more careful in the future. Oh, yeah, yeah. I learned my lesson, Mr. Wingate. I bet I'll pick up plenty from an experience like this. We're in the money. We're in the money. Yes? Uh, I I'd like to see Mr. Charles Braden Sr., please. I'm afraid that's impossible. Mr. Braden's only son died yesterday in an automobile accident. Yes, I know. I read all about it, but I still think he'll see me. Tell him it's Walter Shelley of the Gazette. Who is it, Laura? Uh, it's me, Braden. I'm the guy you spoke to on the phone this morning. Yes, yes. Won't you come in, sir? Thanks. This is the young man I've been telling you about, Laura. Yes, so I gather. Miss Allen is my secretary, Mr. Shelley. Good enough. Well, now, suppose we get down to business. You told me you had some pictures I might be interested in. That's right. May I see them, please? Sure. Here they are. Very interesting. Like a drink, Mr. Shelley? Well, thanks, dollface. Well, here's to uh, what we all want. I'll join you in that, sir. Uh, had time to look at those pictures yet, Mr. Braden? Yes, indeed. Notice anything peculiar about them? I presume you mean that one of the bodies is that of my son, Charles. Yeah, and he's holding a gun. So? So when I heard that the cops only found one stiff, I immediately jumped to the conclusion that you must have taken care of the other by bribing the janitor of the building. But why should I do that? Uh, look, let's stop kidding each other, Braden. A guy with your name couldn't stand the disgrace. You wouldn't want to go through life known as the father of a murderer. There's something in what you say, Mr. Shelley. How much do you want? Uh, <clears throat> ten grand for the set of pictures you've got in your hand. And how much for the negatives? Negatives? Oh, come, come, come. You mustn't take me for a child, Mr. Shelley. I'm aware of the elementals of photography. Now, where are those, those negatives? Cut it out, Brady. You're choking. Where are they? Give me a chance. <clears throat> All right. You, know, you could have killed me then. The negatives, please. Yeah, sure. Got him right here in my pocket. Mr. Braden! I'd advise you to put away that gun, sir. You're not as smart as you think. Apparently not. Wouldn't I be a chump to keep those negatives on me? Oh, no. 
You're gonna pay for him, mister. And pay through the nose. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mike Waring, please. Who's calling? Walter Shelley. Who? Walter Shelley. I'm a reporter on the Gazette. What can I do for you? You mean, what can I do for you? I understand you're one of the best private dicks in New York. Where do you understand that from? Oh, the usual reliable sources. Don't they call you the Falcon? Only when they can't think of anything worse. Look, will you be home for the next half hour? Why? Well, I'd like to come around and drop a fortune in your lap. Why? Well, let's just say it's, uh... Only a few weeks before Christmas, and I like to play Santa Claus nice and early. I'll be seeing you, Harry. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. I have a little suggestion for you ladies who wonder what you're going to do for some interesting menu ideas. And my suggestion is this. Just get a two-pound loaf of Kraft smooth-melting, pasteurized, processed cheese food, Velveeta. You can melt Velveeta for smooth, delicious cheese sauce that'll add extra goodness to vegetables or seafood or rice or just plain toast for a fine main dish. And it's such an easy sauce to make. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Notice how smooth it melts without any lumps at all. Then slowly stir in a quarter of a cup of milk, season to your taste, and there you have it. A delicious cheese sauce with a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. A flavor that everyone, the youngsters and grandma included, will enjoy often. And it's a wholesome dish, because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk. So whether you melt Velveeta for a swell cheese sauce or slice it thick for hearty sandwiches, you'll find Velveeta is a mighty handy helper, Mother. Get a two-pound loaf tomorrow, won't you? It's America's favorite cheese food, the one and only Velveeta, made by Kraft. And now, back to The Adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed since Walter Shelley called Mike Waring with a promise to drop a fortune in his lamp. And now we find Mr. Shelley as good as his word. Yes? You Waring? That's right. I'm Walter Shelley. Oh, you're ahead of schedule. Come on in. Thanks. Uh, You said something on the phone about dropping a fortune in my lap. Uh Uh-huh, and I never lied. Catch. What's this? Just what I promised. In that envelope, a picture's worth half a million. What makes them so valuable? The pose. Oh. You interested? Go on. This party will pay off plenty, Wary. I know I've already seen them. We've got all the angles covered. We? Ah, got a partner. Of course, that means we'll have to split three ways, but it's worth it. Now, this partner of mine has a swell in, see? What we need is someone to handle the detail work. We tried another guy, but he couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. What made you come to me with a swindle like this? Now, look, you don't have to take that tone with me, Wary. Oh, I don't. Uh. All right, now get up. Hey, what's going on in here, Mr. Wary? I was, I was cleaning the hall and I heard a fuss. Oh, no, it's nothing serious, George. Will you get rid of this for me? Huh? There's character on the floor. Throw him out. Oh. Come on, buddy, get up. Come on, pal. I have. Mr. Wary. Yeah. I think there's something the matter with him. I know. He ran into my fist. No, no. I, I I, mean, I can't feel his heartbeat. You what? Yeah. I think you killed him. All right, Waring. Let's have the truth now. And don't give me any more stuff about pictures, because we didn't find any. You didn't? No. Why'd you kill Shelley? I tell you, I didn't kill him, Lieutenant. You admit you slugged him. Look, Webster, I may brag now and then, but I'm still no Joe Lewis. What do the autopsy reports say? He hasn't come in yet. But well, what are they waiting for? Hey, Lieutenant, open up, will you? What do you want, Sergeant? It's a Mr. Wingate to see Waring. Wingate? Well, tell him to beat it. Waring isn't having any visitors. I've got a court order here, Lieutenant. Maybe you'd like to look at it. Yeah, let's see that. There you are. 
Seems to be all right. Open it up, Sergeant. You can have five minutes, no more. It's fair enough. Hello, Waring. Well, who are you? Oh, at the Wingate. Still means nothing. I hold down the slot in the Evening Gazette. Shelley worked for me until he came to me this morning with an idea how he could make some easy dough. Wait a minute. You must be the guy he told me he'd talk to before he came to see me. That's right. I threw him out. Well, what are you doing here? Well, when the story came over the ticker, I thought there might be something I could do for you. Uh -huh. Why should you? I want this story for my paper, exclusively. And I'm willing to pay for it. Okay, Wingate. You got yourself a deal. Uh, do you know what was on those pictures of Shelley's? No. Did he mention any names? Not a one. Well, it doesn't matter. Here are my keys. The superintendent of my building is a character named George Kennedy. Check with him and see what he did with the envelope. And bring it back to me. Haven't the police got it? No, the lieutenant told me they didn't find a thing. It may have been brushed aside in all the excitement. Well, it doesn't sound like much to go on, but keep your fingers crossed, kiddo. I'll do what I can. Okay, Waring, on your feet. Oh, you back again, Lieutenant? Yeah, get your things and get out. How come I'm being released? The autopsy on Shelley clears you. What was it, heart attack? No. Poison. He got it in a drink about six hours before he came to your place. Well, tough luck, Lieutenant. I know how you must feel. Uh, can I use your phone? Sure. There's a pay phone right over there. Thanks, Webster. Maybe I can do as much for you sometime. On wearing. Yeah? Don't use any slugs. That you, George? Oh, hi, Mr. Waring. Say, is uh, Mr. Wingate there? Oh, sure. You want to talk to him? No, I'll see him later. What did you do with the pictures? We didn't find them. Well, they can't have disappeared. They were on my desk before I slugged Shelley. We ain't there now. We've practically taken the place apart. All right, stop wrecking the joint. I'll be right over. <laughs> That's no use, Mike. We've looked in the desk already. Yeah, he's right, Mr. Waring. We went over everything with a fine-tooth comb. Well, I don't get it. Now, George, you're sure when the police removed Shelley's body, they didn't take anything? I'm positive. I was here every minute of the time. Yeah, we might as well give up, Mike. Now, wait a second, Wingate. Shelley was standing right where you are when he tossed that envelope in my lap. When I got up to throw him out, it must have fallen to the floor. Well, I don't see what difference that makes. Well, I could have kicked it over there, and then that... Ki hey, wait a minute. What's that under the radiator? Well, you Whatever you are, George, you're certainly no detective. Is that the envelope? Must be. Well, let's get a glimpse of a half million bucks worth of pictures. Huh. It was robbed. What's the trouble? Oh, well, look. It's a picture of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Brooklyn Dodgers? Yeah, now you tell me who would pay a half million bucks for a still shot of that group when you could go see them in action for a buck and a quarter. <laughs> Hear that, Mike? 3 a.m. I don't care. I'm not leaving until I make head or tail of these pictures. What makes them worth all that money, Wingate? Ah, Shelley must have been crazy. Well, then why was he murdered? Come in. I hate to disturb you, gentlemen, but I'm looking for Mike Waring. Well, you've come to the right place. Are you Mr. Waring? Uh-huh. What's your name? My friends call me Laura Allen. Well, I bet you've got a million of them, Angel. So I can't understand why you should be looking for new ones at this hour. I'm looking for something else, Mr. Waring. What do you want for them? What do I want for what? The pictures. What pictures? Don't give me that. Shelley had them before he died. He hasn't got them now, so uh, who does that leave? Me? Yes. What's your price? Well, I suppose I said I didn't care to do business. It won't do you any good. If you see what I mean. Mike! Uh, don't worry, Wingate. I saw it. Take a blind man to miss a cannon that size. Look, would you mind pointing it elsewhere, Laura? What's the matter, Mr. Waring? Does it make you nervous? Yeah, I don't know what's come over me these past few days, but I can't seem to keep a thing on my stomach, particularly guns. You let go. Oh, come on, Angel, drop it. Oh, nuts. Yeah. Come get it, Wingate. Okay, it's got. Well, now what are you going to do with me? Nothing. 
You can leave whenever you like, Angel. You mean you're letting me go? Yeah, sure, I'm a sport. I always throw the little ones back. Just what are you fishing for, Mr. Waring? The big one. Well, I wouldn't if I were you. You know, some big fish are dangerous. And take it from me, this one's a man killer. Good night, Angel. Shouldn't let her get away, Mike. Why not? That little lady wasn't going to tell us anything, except what she wanted to. Yeah, but remember what Shelley said about a partner. You think that girl... Well, don't you? You know something, Wingate, you're right. Well? Yeah, she's already gone down the elevator. Hello, Laura. Uh, Mr. Braden. That's right. What are you doing in my apartment? My dear girl, I think the answer is fairly obvious. I was waiting for you. But I told you that if I had anything to report, I'd let you know. Well, you can hardly blame me for being anxious, Laura. Now, where are the pictures? I didn't get them. You know, my dear, I find that very difficult to believe. You're such a very determined young lady. Well, I ran into a very determined young man. And yet Mr. Waring let you get away, hmm? Yes, and don't ask me why, because I don't know. You must be tired, my dear. You're quite right, Mr. Braden. I am tired. I'm tired of trying to protect your precious name. Why don't you pay off and let it go at that? I don't like to hear you talk that way, Laura. But knowing you as I do, I'm sure you'll never let this little conversation go any farther. Uh, hello? Is that you, Waring? Uh-huh. This is Laura. Who? Laura Allen, you remember? Oh, sure. Now, listen, Waring, there's something I've got to tell you. Where do you live? At the Rainy Apartments. Before you come, I want you to know that I killed Walter Shelley. Oh, you admit it? Well, if you want to be convinced... Oh. Uh, hello, Laura. Uh. Laura! And well, that's all I know, Wingate. Right after I heard the shot, I grabbed a cab and started over here. Then I remembered my promise to you, so I detoured over to your office to pick you up. I appreciate it, Waring. Hey, what floor do we get off on? Right here, the third. Oh, okay. Good. Must be down this way. Uh-oh, -uh, here it is. Uh, Laura Allen. Uh-oh. Unlocked? Yeah. So, uh, she did commit suicide after all. It seems so. Hey, what do you make of this? Silver cigarette case. Silver nothing. This is platinum. Huh? Yeah, they don't hand these out on push carts. Now here, look at the engraving. Can you make it out? Yeah, to Laura Allen from the tyrant Charles Braden Sr. Charles Braden Sr.? Hey, this girl moved in the big leagues. Yeah, so right. And if she was in Braden's employ, then he's the boy who's interested in the pictures, and she was working hand in glove with Shelley. Yeah, but why would Braden want a picture of the Brooklyn Dodgers? He didn't. The pictures we found must have been phony. Say, wait a minute. Wasn't his son in some sort of a mess recently? Well, he got killed in an automobile accident. No, that's too pat. Braden's hiding something. Who are you calling? The police. Well, I'll make it snappy. I want to phone my paper. Hey, wait a minute. What's the trouble? I just thought of something. I heard the shot that killed Laura over the phone. So? Well, if she died instantly, who hung this receiver back on the hook? Yeah, but that means... Yeah, go on. Say it, Wingate. She was murdered. But you said she talked to suicide. Someone could have forced her to by holding a gun in her back. Who? That's what I intend to find out. Now, look. I want you to get a fingerprint expert up here. What for? The killer made one blunder when he put the receiver back on the hook. Isn't it possible he made another? I don't follow you. Maybe he left his prints on the instrument. You got any idea where we can find an expert at this time of night? Well, we got one down in the paper. Swell. Get him, Wingate. Well, I'll meet you later. Uh, make it Mr. Braden's. Something tells me he'll probably be very interested in the results. <laughs> Mr. Braden? Yes. My name is Waring. Oh, come in, won't you? Thank you. You were a friend of Walter Shelley's, I believe. Well, I wouldn't say that. Strange that he entrusted his most precious possessions to you. I don't think I understand you, Mr. Braden. I'm referring to the pictures, Mr. Waring. Oh, that. Yes, that. May I trouble you for them? And the negatives, of course. What's in it for me? Well, I could promise you any number of things. Yes, but they'd be just that, promises. You see my point. Oh, yeah. You don't have to draw me a diagram. No. 
I had only to draw a gun. All right, put that thing away, Braden. You're forgetting something. I can't imagine what. What's going to happen when the police discover you killed Shelley and Laura? Shelley and Laura? Well, I hardly think there's any danger of that. Well, maybe I can prove you're wrong. I beg your pardon? I think that call is for me, may I? Certainly, you're right ahead. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Mike? Yeah, how'd you make out, Wingate? Did they finish checking those fingerprints? Yes, but there wasn't a single print on it. Oh, that's wonderful. What's the matter with you, Mike? Can't you hear me? Didn't miss a word. Now, come up here and bring that report with you. Uh, you look pleased. Yes, I am. Whose fingerprints do you suppose they found on Laura's telephone? Nobody's. What? You'll forgive me, sir, but I'm afraid I've been guilty of eavesdropping. Oh, you'll never hear anything nice about yourself that way. Perhaps not. But then, Mr. Waring, I'm not a very nice person. I think you're going to find that out. Remember, tomorrow at your grocer's, you can get a wonderful new salad oil for your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil for home use ever offered by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft dressings. Kraft Salad Oil is a lighter-bodied oil, super fine to blend perfectly with other ingredients. Get a pint or quart bottle tomorrow at your grocer's. Ask for... Craft Salad Oil. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two minutes ago, Charles Brayton Sr. told Mike that he wasn't, quote, a very nice person, unquote. And judging by the gun he keeps trained on Mike, Mr. Brayton believes in telling the truth. Well, really, Mr. Waring, you don't know how this pains me. Well, I'd never guess it, Braden. You certainly hide your grief well. And you, sir, your fears. Oh, that's where you're wrong. I don't believe you're going to shoot. Tell me, Mr. Waring, what is your purpose in glancing at that window every five seconds? Frankly, I find it very distracting. That was my purpose. All right, Wingate, grab him. Nice work, Wingate. Now give me the gun. Okay. Here you are. Uh, now phone police headquarters. No, no. My paper comes first. Well, any way you like, but don't forget the cops. I, uh... I don't suppose there'd be much point in appealing to your better nature. Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Wingate? No, oh, I'm just an innocent bystander, Waring. you better leave me out of this. Oh, that's impossible, friend. You've got a lot to say. Oh, you mean because I saved your life? No, because you killed Shelley and Laura. What are you babbling about? Murder, Wingate. I'm just wondering who's going to cover your execution for the Gazette. <laughs> I don't get it, Mr. Waring. You mean Mr. Wingate actually killed Shelley and the girl? Yes, actually, George. Yeah, but why? Those pictures. The ones we found in your apartment. No, no. The ones the police found in Wingate's apartment. He got them from my place before he even called you. Then he planted those phony shots and waited for me to make my great discovery. Yeah, well, why did he do that? Because he knew I wouldn't stop looking until I found a set of pictures. So he made things easy for me. Well, I still don't understand why he killed Shelley. He was Shelley's partner. Wingate? Mm-hmm. He was in from page one, but he got greedy and wanted the whole pie. So he poisoned Shelley and waited for the pictures to drop in his lap. And instead, they dropped in yours. Now, well, that he couldn't figure on. But he did okay as it was. Well, why did he kill Laura? Oh, he had good reason for that. First, he forced her to confess to Shelley's murder. Oh, he thought that would leave him in the clear. Mm -hmm. If she committed suicide, then the case was closed and he could go ahead and blackmail Braden safely. Well, how did you know he was the killer? Remember I told you I sent him to check the fingerprints on Laura Allen's phone? Yeah, and he said there weren't any. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what gave him away. Well, I don't see why. Ain't it possible the killer wiped off his own prints? Yeah, sure. But what happened to mine? I handled the phone after the murder when I was going to call the police. Oh. <laughs> now, does that answer all your questions? Well, all but one. What's that? Um, look, Mr. Waring, uh... What was on those pictures, anyway? Huh? Ah, you'll never know, George. Oh, come on, come on. Break down, Mr. Worry. Uh, that must have been pretty hot stuff, huh? Oh, yes, indeed, they were. Some of the hottest shots I'd ever seen. Why, just to handle them would blister your hands. Yeah? Uh, what were they, huh? Well, they were eight by ten blow-ups... Wow. ...of the Chicago fire. Good night, George. <laughs> There 
there comes a time in the life of every homemaker when she has to fix a dinner fast, and that's when Kraft Dinner is such a help. You see, in just seven minutes cooking time, Kraft Dinner makes delicious macaroni and cheese. Wonderful, tender macaroni with fine cheese flavor all through. Just like I said, in only seven minutes cooking time. That's because every package of Kraft Dinner gives you a special quick cooking macaroni and just the right amount of Kraft grated for that grand cheese flavor. So tomorrow, get a couple of packages of Kraft Dinner. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Cornelia. I'm glad you called, but I'll have to take a rain check, Angel. Tonight I'm tied up with a character who tried to pull off a legal swindle. He found a loophole in the law, but we found a bullet hole in him. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Stooges' Errand. Sunday afternoon and time for another thrilling adventure of the Falcon. But first, a word about another kind of adventure. An adventure in flavor. For right now at your grocer's, there's a wonderful new salad oil for use in your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Now, Kraft salad oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil, a lighter bodied oil to mix quickly and perfectly with all other ingredients. That's because it's not just refined. It's superfined by a special process created by Kraft. Yes, superfined to put new magic into the salad dressings you make yourself into those wonderful chiffon cakes you pride yourself on, into every home recipe that calls for liquid shortening. Don't wait to get acquainted with Kraft Salad Oil. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label tomorrow at your grocer's. Get Kraft Salad Oil. And now, the case of the Stooges' errand. Sunday afternoon in New York, and tall, slender Rog Saunders has just come out of his apartment building, accompanied by his squat, cigar-chewing companion, chauffeur, bodyguard, and canasta partner, Jocko Quinn. As they approach Saunders' new foreign-made racing job, they see a man walking around the car, studying it appreciatively. Hey, boss, Macy. So I see, Jocko. So I see. 